called, we're at the end of the series called Seize the Day. And so I thought, how appropriate to end this series of seizing the day with all of us learning to seize our thoughts. Isn't that a good thing to end with? To deal with our thought lives? To, to, all our issues are right here. We deal with this mind of ours. We deal with these thoughts in our head, and it messes us up. It messes with our minds and our heads, and, you know, we just talk ourselves out of things. We think a thought, and then we, um, then, you know, that thought, we talk ourselves out of it. And so I just want to say everything that we say does come from the thoughts in our mind. It's all right. It's Miss Cora. <laughs> That's my grandbaby, and she misses me. I love you, baby. <laughs> she got a cracker. But anyway. So let's get on to the thing that we need to get on. So our thoughts can either lift us up or they can drag us down. How many of you know that? Our thoughts can inspire us or they can defeat us. Our thinking can open up new adventures or can cause us to stay in this cycle of depression, the cycle of thinking that just totally messes with our lives and just drags us down. So today I just thought, with us learning how to seize our thoughts, we can truly seize our days. But we've got to get our thoughts in check. And see, the enemy's wise to this. We're going to be unpacking all this. Because, see, we have an adversary. We have an enemy. Hey! And we, <laughs> friends of ours just showed up. And you know what? The enemy wants to knock you out. He wants to take us down. And how is he going to do that? He's going to do it through our mind. He's going to sow little seeds into our minds and take us down. So, see, God cares about us so much that he wants to cause us to see that our minds are limiting our lives. He wants to blow our minds in amazing ways. But to do that, we've got to check our thinking. We've got to get some things in check. So life is short, and I don't know about you, but I don't want to live a life defeated. I don't want to live a life backpedaling. I don't want to live a life, you know, wondering what ifs and all that stuff. I want to do and seize and be all God's called me to be. And is that easy? No. No, because sometimes those thoughts weigh way heavier than I can do this. The I can'ts can weigh heavier than the I can's. So we often put all these things on repeat and, and we live in this cycle. And so, you know, I don't know if you've done this, but like I find a worship song that I love, and I'll just put that thing on repeat, replay. I'll replay it over and over and over till I get sick of it, or Tim gets sick of hearing me play it. And you know what? But what that's doing is when you get something like that, you're just filling yourself up. You're absorbing those words, and those words are giving you life and giving you courage and giving you strength. But on the flip side, when someone says something that hurts us, when our flesh is wanting us to go do something we know we shouldn't do, when those attacks come to our mind, what do we do? We replay it. We replay it. We put it on repeat. And what happens? All of a sudden, you're more and more and more defeated. All of a sudden, you just feel ugh, weighted down like Tim was showing us with those bags. You know, all that baggage just is on your back. And so today, we've got to learn that freedom starts in our mind. And God wants you free. He wants us free. He doesn't want, want us bound up. He doesn't want us tripping up over these lies of the enemy. See, the enemy's smart. He knows what he's doing, but guess what? God has given his spirit to us so we can be smarter. So the light bulb can go on and we can conquer the lies of the enemy. People can be free physically, but yet they aren't free mentally. And this is a real problem in our society. And I understand, let me just kind of fence this, I understand for some people the struggle is very real and I understand that people have chemical imbalances and things like that and I'm not talking about this right here. I, I know that sometimes we need like a doctor's help to kind of help us with our struggles in our minds. And you know what, that's okay. Don't ever beat yourself up. Don't ever feel shame, ashamed if you've got to go to a doctor or you've got to... Um, get some extra help, that's okay. But don't just stop there. 
because I believe in a miracle working God. I believe that even though you may struggle in your flesh, you may struggle in your mind, and maybe you're predisposed to wrong thinking, which all of us sometimes really are, I believe Jesus can set us free. I believe he can remove those thoughts and he can align our mind and, and balance those chemicals. I believe he can do it. And so all of us have to guard our thoughts. None of us are exempt. None of us are the exception to the rule, are we? We all struggle with thinking, thinking. I mean, maybe you don't. I do. I do. Let's just be real. And we allow those thoughts to run wild. I'm just like, I tell you, you know, I can come up here and I can preach a word to you and you're like, oh, wow, you know, she's got it going on. But guess what? I go home and I got to deal with my wild running thoughts just like you. Every day, Monday, Tuesday, all through the week, I have to still say, no, I'm not going to believe that report. I'm going to believe what God says. I have a decision to make. You have a decision to make. And so just know we're all in this together. I heard someone say recently that we're all just this close to a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, come on now, come on. You don't want to admit you got a little crazy in there, a little crazy going on. But we all have this little close to crazy. And thank you, Jesus, that he sanctifies us. Thank you, Jesus, that he cleanses us. Thank you, Jesus, that he picks us up and puts us on the right path because if we're left to ourselves, we just mess it all up. We just, we're a wreck. We're a train wreck waiting to happen. But we have Jesus. We have his power. We have his strength. So we can get free in our mind and we can change our life. I believe that. So I'm going to talk about the prodigal son. You guys know about the parable that Jesus shared. And he was talking about the father that had two sons. And the one son, he wanted his inheritance. I mean, who wouldn't want their inheritance? Okay, dad, give me the money now because i got some stuff to go buy. There's some things I want to go get. So he went ahead and gave the son that wanted his inheritance and said, here you go. So that son went and he partied. He had some fun. He went out there and did his thing. So guess what happens? All of a sudden, he runs out of money. And on top of it, the land at that time went into a famine. So he was hurting for certain. This dude had done all this fun, and he thought, he thought, this was going to be great. And then all of a sudden, he has to go get hired to go feed the pigs. He's hungry. He's starving. And he's thinking, what have I done? The thought changed, didn't it? The first thought is like, oh, this is going to be awesome. I got all this money. I'm going to go party. I'm going to do all this stuff. And then all of a sudden he's like, I messed this up. I messed this up. And I love what the scripture says in there. It says, he came to his senses. See, this word for all of us in here today is for all of us to come to our senses. Because every single day, you're going to battle your thoughts. Every single day, the enemy is going to come and lie to you. Every single day, people are going to disappoint you. Every single day, we got to deal with our minds. we got to deal with our thoughts. And so we have to be reminded, come to your senses. Come to your senses. Don't be led by that. Don't be led by the hurt and the anger and the disappointments. But be led by God. And, you know, I was telling Tim, I said, this is going to be a simple message. But you know what? We need to be reminded of this every single day because it's so, so important. So when he came to his senses, what did he do? He went back to his father because he's like, hey, my father, you know, his servants are even treated better than this. And guess what his father did? He welcomed him back with open arms. Same thing for each one of us. When we get off course, when we mess it up, our father's right there with open arms saying, come back. Come back to me. I never stop loving you. I'm always right there. I got you. I love that. So it all ended well for him, but it's only because he came to his senses. And I want for all of us today to remember every single day, I need to come to my senses. <laughs> when the enemy's beating hard at your the, the wall of your head, of your mind. Come to your senses and know that this is not from God. This is not, this is my flesh, this is the enemy. 
So, so many of us walk around in web of deception. Boy, we're seeing that on the rise. And if there's one thing that is going to destroy the generations coming up, it's going to be the web of lies that the enemy is telling them. Even people our age and older, all ages, there are webs and um, deception happening at such a greater level than I've ever seen it. Maybe I'm just older and I'm more aware, but I'm just like, you've got to be kidding. I mean, things that should line up with the word of God and people are questioning it. But it's in the Bible. Oh, but, 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 but. No, if it's in the word of God, I believe what the word of God says. Just because your opinion shifted, just because your thinking's changed, does not mean the word of God has changed. We've got to be anchored on the word of God. we got to know the truth because it is the truth that will set us free. Because it says in the last days, even the elect will fall away and be deceived. And I know I probably say this all the time, but I don't want to be that. I don't want to be part of the elect, part of God's people that falls away because I was deceived. Because I was worried, to, you know, this is a trivial thing, but worried about what people think before what God thinks. It's all pertinent. It's all important. But see, what happened with this son, it, it all began with a thought. And everything that, every choice, everything we do in life begins with a thought. See, thoughts can put us in a good place. This church came from a thought from God that was deposited into Tim and I. And we're here today because we obeyed that thought that God put in our heart. But see, we could have obeyed and listened to the lies of the enemy because this was a 25-year-old journey, y'all, to get to this point. It was a long time. And we, you know, we had those thoughts of, you can't. You can't do that. How are you going to be provided for? Is anyone going to even come? You're not good enough. All these thoughts bombard our mind. But you know what? We had to say, you know what? But God is with us. He's speaking this. And if it's his thought, his idea, he's going to bring it forth. We got to follow the God thoughts in our lives. The Holy Spirit had dropped this in my mind, or my heart, the other day when I was studying. It says, you are one thought away from a change. You are one thought away from being the change. And you are one thought away from helping someone else to change. Man, I, when that dropped to me, I was like, that's so true. Because it takes our eyes off ourselves. And it puts our eyes on God and says, God, what do you want me to do? What do I need to change so I can be pleasing to you? And how can I love and help other people? That's what we're here for. That's what this is all about. So we got to seize those God thoughts in our lives. We got to go after them. And we got to begin to starve the thoughts that are not of God. How do we starve those thoughts? Well, of course we do it with the word of God. So we're going to go into that a little bit. But... Because the negative, toxic thoughts are going to come. Oh, are they going to come every single day? But this is old saying, but you know, a, a bird can fly over your head, but you don't have to let it build a nest on your head. And so you have a choice. Yeah, you may be like, oh, this thought hit my head. Well, don't just melt and think, I'm terrible. I had this terrible thought. No, the thoughts are going to come. But it's what you do with those thoughts. Are you going to walk the thought out? Are you going to keep thinking that thought? Or are you going to say, ah, nope, I'm going to line my thoughts up with God. What his word says. What I know to be true. What I know to be right in him. The Bible is powerful in our weapon against wrong thinking. So 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4 says this. It says, for though we live in the world... We do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Oh, I love that so much. People, we are in a spiritual battle. Make no mistake, the enemy wants your mind. He wants your thinking to be messed up because he wants to steal your hope. We're in a spiritual battle. You wonder why these things bombard your mind? Because... He wants to take us out. He wants to mess with us. We're in a war. 
And sometimes we just think, oh, we're just going to live life. Oh, you know, you know what? Yes, we should have joy. But guess what? We need to be on guard. We got to be on guard. Because the enemy is not, he's not playing games. He's not playing games at all. So the Greek word for power, where it says in that scripture, the divine power, the Greek word is dunamis. And that means, that's not just, oh, you got power. It means miraculous, explosive power of God. Do you know you have that in your life? When we are in Christ, when we have the Holy Spirit flowing through our lives, you are not weak. You are not weak. The enemy would love to tell you you are. The enemy would love to show you your past and say, oh, who do you think you are? But guess what? You know what? I'm not my past. I'm who Christ has called me to be now. I am who he says I am. And so I have the miraculous, explosive power of the Holy Spirit in my life, and I don't need to bow to the enemy. Too many of us are bowing to the enemy. We're bowing to the lies, and it's got to stop. That's why I'm like sounding the alarm and saying, take notice. Get, stand up, take guard, and know you do not have to bow to the lies of the enemy. Oh, stronghold, it talks about divine power to demolish our strongholds. The word stronghold, and I might not say this right, but it's okaroma. Oka, oka. Anyway, a strong walled fortress or prison. See, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to put us in prison. He wants to keep you locked up, trapped in your thinking, in a prison. And we become a prisoner locked by our own thoughts. And it becomes deception. Oh my goodness, we see this so much. See, the enemy tries to shape our thinking by one thought at a time. So you may have one little defeat thought and you think, eh, it's no big deal. But it's that thought on top of another thought, on top of another thought that becomes this grand thought that you can't feel like you can get out. You are in a prison of your thoughts. You're in a prison of lies. So I've got this tent because a prison is kind of like a, a tent. I know this is not a real prison tent. But imagine you're in a prison of lies, right? All right, hold on. This is a really wimpy one, right? Okay. This was supposed to pop easier. At home, it popped right open. All right, all right, woo! Okay. So, huh? You got on it? I am. So, we, we sit in the prison of our thoughts. And see, the problem is, is when we get into the, when we allow the thought upon the thought upon the thought build this wall, that's what it does. It builds a wall around our lives. And sometimes, you know, you know how you'll meet someone and you can just tell something's kind of, they, they got a wall. Because they believe the lies of the enemy. And so we sit in this, this wall, in this prison that we've made. Hi. And so, but see, we write on our walls. So the word distrust comes up on the wall. And the word worry you know, we're worrying. We're worrying about our family. We're worrying about our life. We're worrying about our future. And that becomes a big wall in our life. We write failure. I've messed up before. I'm going to keep messing up. And we believe it more and more and more. And then anger. I was hurt. I was rejected. Things didn't go my way. And so that wall builds up around our lives. Comparison. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Addiction. We're trying to fill the void. And God's going, I'm the one to fill your only void. I'm the one for your life. I'm bad. I'm just bad. I'm just going to keep doing bad things because I've always done bad things. I'm going to keep doing bad things. And all these words are written on our walls. So we've built it up and we just become hopeless. In our own little prison, and the, the thing the enemy's trying to do is to get you to feel all alone. He wants you to feel defeated. He wants you to feel alone in your prison of lies. But see, as we begin to apply God's word in our life, see, we begin to speak it, and it begins to demolish, and it begins to erase, and see, it tears down 
are walls of lies in our lives. And all those things that were meant to take you out, all those things that were meant to take you down, now become your testimony. Now become you being used by God in a mighty powerful way to say, there's hope. There's hope. My, my life told me something else. I messed up. I screwed up. People hurt me. But guess what? Jesus rescued my life. Jesus set me free. And I don't bow down to these lies anymore. I don't believe the lies of the enemy anymore. You can be free. You can be free. But the thing of it is, I was going to pop up. Those lies will try to pop back up, won't they? They'll try to pop back up. And see, that's where we got to get the word of God back in us and say, oh, no, oh, no, you're not going to pop back up in my life. I have the word of God. I am a blood-bought Christian, and I don't have to believe these anymore. You have to do this every single day, every day, because otherwise, I'm telling you, you know, Sunday to Sunday, we can only keep you so built up. You've got to build yourself up. You've got to go to God. You've got to know the truth. You've got to know your source, and that is Jesus Christ and him alone. It's his word. His mighty word is powerful. And you know, I've told you that before, sometimes I don't want to go and sit and read the word. Sometimes I just want to watch TV. But when you're struggling, get the word. Get the word. Get into worship. Let that word breathe life. Let it demolish the lies of the enemy. I love it. That dunamis, explosive power. You know, I can't do this in myself. For people that knew me back in the day, I was a chicken little. <laughs> Seriously. I never in a million years would have put myself up on the stage in front of a bunch of people and talked. I would have cried. But you know what? It's because his spirit got down deep inside of me and I began to believe his truth of who I am in him not me and what he's going to use you to do it's not you it's his spirit moving through you oh my goodness see as I speak and think God's way I can say the Lord is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation guess what weakness has to go the one who is in me is greater than who is in the world. Doubt has to go. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Negativity has to go as I speak these things. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Guess what? Fear has to go. Therefore, if any person is in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature all together. The old has passed away. Fresh and new has come. My old ways has to go. Oh, come on. Casting all my cares on him, for he cares for me affectionately and cares about me watchfully. Worry has to go. I believe that whatever God asks me to do and asks you to do, that we can do it with his help. We can. Miracles come in the cans and not in the camps. The I can't has to go. The only I can't we should ever be saying is, I can't do this without you, Lord. <laughs> That's the only I can't that should be coming out of our mouth. Is I need you. Because it's not me, it's all you, Jesus. The life you have is a reflection of the thoughts you think. Sometimes that's hard to swallow. <laughs> You're like, ooh. But see, the beautiful thing about that is we can reset and reroute our thinking. And we can be changed. So tell your neighbor, change your thinking. And you can change your life. So 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, we can demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. What is this saying? What is this saying? It's basically saying you have to take every thought captive. Oh, we do. That's not of God. That's why we have his word. 
See, every, you know, every day, every day, because, let me read this, because our life is moving in the direction of our strongest thought. Let me say that again. Our life is moving in the direction of our strongest thought. Oh, I can tell when my thinking is not going good. I get cranky. I'm not happy. I feel defeated. It's so weird. Isn't it so weird how you can be in a service and you can be pumped up and yes, God, let's go. We're going to do this thing. And then you get home and you're just like, oh, I don't feel like doing nothing. Let's be real here. This is our real life. I mean, there have been times when Tim and I are like, oh, we got to go get up and we got to go set up. We got to do this thing. Because if we don't do it, nobody else will. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We kind of got to lead this thing. But we, we know that there's a mandate greater than our feelings. We can't be led by our feelings. But we be led by what God's placed in our hearts. And we stay true to that. Stay true to that. Proverbs 23, 7a says this. For as he or she thinks in his heart, so is he. So is she. So as we think, it is what we become. If you feel like you're a failure, you're not going to ever try. If you, feel, if you know that you can go do something great for God, you're going to go do it. See, most of our battles are won and lost in our mind. It's so, so true. See, our mind truly is a battlefield. We've heard Joyce Meyer say that so many in her book and everything. But it's true. Our mind's a battlefield. We're, it's like our, our spirit side and, and our flesh side are at war. And when you know that, it doesn't freak you out so bad because you're like, okay, okay, I see what's going on here. Okay, my flesh is trying to get the upper hand. But you know what? I'm going to feed the spirit side of me. I'm not going to let the flesh overcome, but I'm going to let the spirit overcome the flesh. How do I do that? It's by getting into worship. Worship him, y'all. Worship. Like I said, put that song that means so much to you on replay, replay. Just let it soak and soak. And it just starts to come out of you. I was over at Megan, my daughter-in-law's apartment, and she just keeps worship playing. And I'm like, I love it because you're just driving out the enemy. You're just driving out those negative thoughts. You stay strong and keep playing that worship. Keep believing those words because it's just building you up. It's building you up, and we have to do that. I mean, sometimes I like to put on some 80s, too. But you know what? That's not good. No, don't do that. Don't do that for all my 80s friends out there. But anyway, we need the word. We need the word. We need it to be so a part of who we are that it just comes out like second nature. And I know some of you are like, well, that does not come out like my second nature. <laughs> That's okay. We're growing. We're growing. And that's why we come to church, we get built up, we get equipped, and then we go and we use these tools in the work, we, or the work week, in the school, at home, with our children. We're learning, we're growing, we're changing day by day by day. That's our walk. This is a walk. It doesn't mean, oh, be perfect. Ah, we won't achieve that. If you haven't noticed yet, you're not going to be perfect here on this earth because this life trips us up. But guess what, God, thank you, Lord, that he sees our heart. He sees your heart, and he knows that you love him, and you're doing all you can to keep serving him, to keep growing. To, you know, when you mess up, you get back up. That's what matters. That's what he's looking for. Now, oh, I lost my place. But if I fill my mind with God's truth, my thoughts will turn positive, and then you can think thoughts like, I believe I can make a difference, and I probably will. I'm telling you. I will look for the good in people. Oh, sometimes that's hard because we don't want to look for the good in the people because they're bads blaring. But guess what? We all got our own little bad. We all got our own little weirdness. Let's be more gracious. Let's be more kind. Let's look for the good and not point out the bad. Let's think thoughts that empower one another, strengthen one another, lift each other up. I'm so tired of just seeing Christians even that are just cutting people down, cutting each other down. I've done it myself, so I'm not pointing any fingers. I have to shut my mouth sometimes. 
because my thinking's off. My thinking's wrong, and God's challenging me as I teach this to you. I'm teaching it to me because I have to guard my mind too. We have to guard our thoughts. We gotta lift people up, encourage them. We have to know no matter what happens in life, I can trust God and he's good all the time. We gotta know that to the depths of our soul. We gotta know that. So my point one, I have a point this time, this is exciting. I want you to identify the number one stronghold that's holding you back. We all have, well, maybe you got two or three, but we all have a, that thought that likes to keep coming to our head. You know, that, that thought, you know that thought. See, my thought, and I'll just share and be transparent with you, my thought is I'm not good enough. So, you know, I, so many times through my life, it's like I'll shrink back. And I always thought, oh, it's more about fear. Well, it's, I allow the fear in my life, but my fear is because I don't want to look stupid. I don't want to not measure up in the eyes of people. And so, therefore, I shrink back. I mean, you can ask Tim how many times to be like, you need to, you know, step out, be more aggressive. And I'm just like, no, I'm good. I mean, when we first started dating, we'd go to a visit a new church, right? And so here's Tim going to the front row. I'm like, let's sit in the back. In the back, the back, whoa, the back's good, the back's good. And so, yeah, but that was my personality. And so for me, I'm always dealing with that, you're not good enough. Who do you think you are? Why should you do, why, why do you think you should do that? Who, who's going to listen to you? And it's, that's the enemy. That's the enemy because, you know what, not that I think I'm anything great and there's people that are way more polished and way more anointed and all this stuff, but God's put something there that, if I don't give it, I'm disobedient. And God's put stuff in you that if you don't give it, you're going to be disobedient. You have seeds of greatness in you. You have things in you that you're allowing the lies, the thoughts to hold you down, to hold you back, to keep you prisoner. And we want to bust, demolish those lives today. Because I want all of us to walk free. I want all of us to rise up as a mighty troop for the gospel of Jesus Christ and to point people to Jesus and say, there's hope, there's hope. And I read this uh, thing on Facebook the other day, or just this morning maybe, and it said the book of Philippians is noted as the book of joy. But then it goes on to say that book was written in prison, in jail. Could you have joy if you're sitting in a prison cell? I don't want to go there and find out. But that's sobering to think. See, that's what the gospel does. That's when we are really, truly staying hidden in him, staying in his spirit, no matter what life deals you, and it will deal us some hard times, you can still have a joy. And that joy comes from God alone. It don't come from your circumstances. It don't come from your family, from your spouse, from your kids. I mean, there's aspects that do, yes. Ultimately, our joy comes from Jesus. Our joy comes from knowing him. And I just, my heart just so much wants us to know him every day closer and closer and deeper and deeper. We need him. We need him. You need Jesus, you need to know he loves you with everything. He, he knows all about your stuff. He knows all about your mess ups. And those thoughts are just to come to stop you, to lie to you. And maybe there's truth in there. That's okay. It just shows you what to work on. It just shows me the areas I need to work on and that I need to grow and I need to get more of God's thinking. Because the more I get him inside of me, his spirit, his truth, the less I'm going to do the stupid stuff. The less I'm going to believe the lies. So what's your default thought, thought? Identify it and name it. We have to identify what we want to defeat. Sometimes we, we're like, I don't know, I don't know. Well, you know, you know what keeps coming up and is your blocker. Name it and let's defeat it. So this is a word that I believe God <clears throat> just kind of dropped in me prophetically this um, last night. So I want to read this to you. It says, but today God wants you to know that it is time to think a different way. 
What you have known to be true in the past will not be true for your future. A new path is to be forged, a new way of thinking to be birthed, and a new way of life is in front of you. Will you embrace it? Will you embrace it? It takes you. It takes you. No one else can do it for you. It takes you. Romans 12, 2 says this, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I love that. I love that because I know that I need my mind renewed every single day. And if you say you don't, you're lying. So lastly, we have to renew our mind. And we only do that by just absorbing God's word. Absorb God's word. My point too is name the truth that demolishes our strongholds. So you identify the thing that is your stumbling block. And I'm just asking you today, just start there with one thing, maybe two. One or two things that are your stumbling block in your mind and your thinking. And you'll, you'll see it as the week goes on. As you see that and you identify it, then begin to go to God's word. Like Tim said last week, if you struggle with anger, go look up on Google. Scriptures on anger. And then start reading those scriptures. If that's your thing. Because that's what demolishes the strongholds. It's the word of God that breaks the yokes off of our minds. We got to speak God's truth in our situation. And we take every thought captive. I love that because the Greek word take captive or captive means capture with a spear or a sword. So see, God's word is the sword of the spirit. See, God's word is powerful. I know sometimes you open it up and you're looking and you're going, okay, that person begot that person and that person begot that. I don't even have a clue. You know what? Don't start with the hard stuff. Go to the easier stuff. Start in, you know, Matthew, Luke, John. Go to Psalms. Go to Proverbs. If you want some wisdom, come on now. Go read some Proverbs. You'll get some wisdom in your life. Oh, I know I need wisdom. I need lots of Proverbs in my daily brain. You know, post quotes. But it's God's word that breaks and sets us free. Because if you keep talking your thoughts, you are not going to get free. You're going to stay in the same old cycle of thinking it's only when we put in I need this word just to soak into my brain I just need it just open it up I need your word you know I wish God would just download it like that just download your word straight into my mind it'd be easier that way right we need God's word oh I mean and I'm talking to myself if I was preaching to me today I gotta open this book I got to read it and not just read it, believe it. I got to believe it because when you believe it, you step out and you do crazy awesome things for God. When you believe it, you just might see a miracle in your life or a miracle in someone else's life. There's someone in here today that God's given you a gift of prayer, but guess what? You're afraid to go step out and pray. But if you will step out and pray, you just might see a miracle happen. That's a word for someone out there. Whew. So Hebrews 4.12 says, ha, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, and it penetrates even to the dividing soul and the spirit and joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of our hearts. Woo! See, the word of God don't play no games. And I know some people, they avoid coming to church. They avoid reading the word because they don't, they know. The enemy knows. If you get a hold of this and you really start applying this and you really start believing this, you can shake your world for Jesus. If we really get it, really get it. I don't think I really um, got it because I'm not out there in the stores just trying to win people to Jesus. I'm like, oh. Jesus loves you. I don't even, yeah, yeah. We're like afraid of people. We have a short moment, y'all. Let's love people. You don't have to go beat them over the head with the Bible. I'm not saying that. But love them. 
Let them see something different in your life. Let them see you're real. We're real. We messed up just like you, but you know what? We have Jesus. He's the difference maker. Share those things with them. So I put, when we read God's word and apply it to our lives, it goes into our heart, into our mind, like a double-edged sword, and it cuts away all our wrong thinking. I love that. All the lies, all the hopelessness. And it helps us to stay on course. We need to stay on course. God's word breathes life into us. And when we feel like we can't do it anymore, his word just lifts us up. I can't tell you how many times when I felt so weak that God's word just lifts, encourages, strengthens my life. It's the truth we live by. It's the only truth. It's the conviction we need when we need a little whooping. And that's okay. Learn to embrace that because God only disciplines those he loves. He's not looking to knock us down. He, he exposes the junk, the wrong thoughts, the wrong thinking in our lives so we can grow. So we can be who he's called us to be. Not to ever make you feel beat down. I felt like that years, years back. He's up there, oh, if I messed up, I'm going to get hit with a baseball bat. That's not God's heart. His heart's to love us, to encourage us, to lift us up. It gives us a promise to cling to. This word is a promise, and it brings us comfort. It brings us hope. It brings us peace. God's word. So I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this kind of a funny scripture choice. But I'm closing with Lamentations 3, 19 through 21. <laughs> Hang on. It says this. I'll never forget the trouble, the other utter lostness, the taste of ashes, the poison I've swallowed. I remember it all. Oh, how well I remember the feeling of hitting bottom. But... There's one thing I remember, and what does it say? Remembering, I keep grip on hope. See, you might not forget all the junk. You, not, you may not forget the stuff you walked through. And you know what? Sometimes it's okay because it keeps you like, okay, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to do that again. I don't want to fall into that trap again. But you know what? I don't allow it to hold me a prisoner. I keep a grip on hope. Keep a grip on hope and your life will be transformed and your life will transform other people and God gets all the glory, all the glory for what he's done in our lives. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. That's why I love that. Keep a grip on hope and don't just remember that. Keep remembering. Every time those thoughts rise up, oh no, I'm keeping a grip on hope. This is your hope. Keep a grip on hope. Keep that grip on hope. If you have a U version, a Bible app on your phone, okay, put the phone down otherwise. But if you got the U version out, keep a grip on that hope. Look at that word. Keep it before you. That's your hope. That's your strength. That's your peace. That's what's going to guide you and direct you and grow you. His word, the Holy Spirit's right there always wanting to breathe in our life, in our mind, and letting us know we're never alone. You're never alone. You're never alone. I don't care how much your flesh may make you feel alone. You are never alone. You're here today for a reason. And so before we just move from this moment, I don't know everyone in here, and I don't want anyone to leave here without having the opportunity to make Jesus their Lord and their Savior. And so, just everyone close your eyes, just for a moment. I'm not going to, you know, embarrass you or anything, but you know what? There's nothing greater than to know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. I mean, I get up here and rant and rave like a goofball. But you know what? I do it so hopefully you will see glimpses of the love and the truth of Jesus. And you will see that he's for you. See, Jesus died on a cross. He shed his blood so we 
could come to know him and be set free and be cleansed by that blood. It's only by the blood of Jesus that we can be set free. And so I just want to give everyone an opportunity all over this place. I'm not going to call you out, but I just want, if that's you right now, you're like, you know what? I've been away from Jesus or I've never received Jesus. But I know right now it's time for me and him to do some business. And it's time for me and Jesus to have a relationship that is deep. I just want to give that invitation and just ask you all over this place, if that's you and you say, I want to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior and I want to begin living every day for him. I, I want him to help my thinking, to help my mind. He'll do it for you. But more importantly, one day we get to be in heaven with Jesus. That's the greatest gift is to live with him. So if that's you all over the place, just raise your hand. This is just between you and God. I see that hand. Is there anyone else? Even if you don't raise your hand, but you're saying in your heart right now, Jesus, I want to make you my Lord and Savior. You know what? That's all that matters. Because this is between you and him ultimately. So is there anyone else? You can raise your hand to say, yes, I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior. Is there anyone else? Well, I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to ask for those of you that the Holy Spirit's stirring this in you right now and, and he's, he's moving in your life. Say this prayer with all your heart because ultimately it, it just matters. Your heart matters. This is between you and him. So everyone just repeat this prayer after me and just say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me now. I believe that you died for me and that your blood cleanses my life. I make you my Savior and my Lord. And I thank you that I'm your child today. Fill me with your spirit. Help my mind. Help my thoughts. Help me to grow in your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Continue to keep your eyes closed. Father God, I just pray for each one of us here today. Lord Jesus, I pray that every single day when the enemy tries to bombard our minds, when the lies of the enemy tries to put us in a prison, that Holy Spirit, we will run to you. Father God, that we will run to your word. We will believe your word and that your truth will set us free, that your truth will demolish the lies of the enemy. And Father God, I pray that every stronghold that is trying to keep people in prison is broken in the name of Jesus and that we can walk free, that we can be a testimony to those around us. So we thank you and we love you with all our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Woo!